Okay team, welcome back. We're going to talk today about the beam bending flexure formula. We're going to get a new formula on our formula sheet today. Woohoo! Okay, so what we're talking today about is beam bending. Okay, so if I have my beam, here's my beam again, right, my Nerf noodle, right? As I start bending this beam, what's happening to that beam? Well, if you can see the top of my beam, I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's little wrinkles on it, right? Why are there wrinkles on the top? Because as I bend this, the top fibers of, of this beam are in compression, right? Whereas the bottom ones down here are being stretched, they're in tension. So somewhere in between the top and the bottom, there has to be something going on. It has to switch from compression to tension, right? Well, it does that at what's called the neutral axis, okay? Or the centroidal axis of the part. Here's a beam I have that I have a cross section of, right? I, the beam goes into the board like that, and I've taken a cross section on the end of it, and look at that cross sectional view, uh, it's kind of a T-shaped, okay? So somewhere on this thing, this beam, is what's called the neutral axis, right? The neutral axis. So if it's, if it's compression at the top and tension at the bottom, what's going on with the neutral axis? Nothing. It's like get in your car, put it in neutral, where do you go? Nowhere, okay? So <clears throat> the, the equation for this, this, what's gonna happen here in beam bending is this. Sigma equals MC over I. Now that is a big time equation. We're gonna use that about a million times to the end of the semester. So what does that mean? What kind of stress is sigma? Remember that's normal stress. That's a stress that makes this beam longer or shorter, right? A compressive or a tensile stress, okay? Well, what's happening? On the top, what do I have? Compression, right? And I'm being squeezed together. So the top, there's stress due to those fibers being in compression. On the bottom, there's stress due to those fibers being pulled apart in tension, okay? So that's, the, that's where this comes in. So on the top of this beam, I'm gonna have compression. I'm going to have a tension from the compression and on the bottom uh, from tension getting longer. And remember this, that compression is going to have, uh, sigma is going to have a negative sign. And then tension, what does tension start with? A positive sign, right? Sigma is going to be positive, right? So those things that are in tension are getting longer, positive stress. If it's getting shorter, it's in compression, negative stress, okay? So, how do we solve these kind of problems, okay? We, do we remember all these things? What is M? M is bending moment. We know how to solve that, right? If we have to, we can draw a shear moment diagram. We can tell you what M is at any point on the beam. On this problem, they say that, you know, here's the beam. They have this moment like that, right? Something is twisting its four foot kips, so that, that moment is twisting it like so, okay? So we already know the bending moment for this one. What is C? Well, that is the distance from the neutral axis to the point I'm interested in. And then this point, they say find max tension. So where's maximum gonna happen? Well, it's zero here, and it starts increasing, increasing, increasing. So the max is gonna be on the very outside of the part. So this is max, or that is max, right? This is max for compression. This is max for tension. Okay, so C is a distance, okay? And then of course I, we learned I in uh, statics, didn't we? I is the area moment of inertia, right? The moi, okay? And what was the equation for that? Remember we had to do the parallel axis theorem? The equation was I equals 1 12 B H cubed plus a D squared, excuse me. So that was the equation to find I for a rectangular shape. We're gonna to have to do that too here, okay? So this is a calculated thing, we can't just look it up. This is given, that's kind of given, except we don't have it here. So, you know that neutral axis, where does it occur? It also occurs at what we call the centroidal axis. So step one for this problem. We gotta find the centroid of this, don't we, y'all? So we're going back to statics here. And always start from the bottom of the part. I think that's easy. So if you just use the bottom of the part as a datum and find the centroid from the bottom. So how far is it from the bottom of the part 
up to there, right? And that looks like it's in the y direction. So we need to find y bar for this part, okay? How do we do that? We're going back to statics. Here we go. We're talking about a T cross section. This thing says it's 0.5 inches typical. What does typical mean? That means it's 0.5 there, 0.5 there, 0.5 there. The whole thickness is 0.5 everywhere. So what do you say we divide this into, oh, I don't know, four shapes, right? Let's divide it here and divide it there. And we'll divide it across there, okay? So we'll, we'll call U shape one, shape two, shape three, and shape four. Okay, so if you remember from centroids, we're gonna use our little table method, and we, here's the table method. Shape one, two, three, four, right? And then on the top up here, what do I have? I have Y, A, and Y, A, okay? So all we have to do is fill in this little table here, and we'll be good to go, okay? Because what is, what is the equation for y bar? y bar is equal to the sum of the y a's divided by the sum of the areas, right? Okay, let me get this other black pen, it's working better. Here we go. So let's see if we can fill this in. Where is y bar for shape number one, okay? Now, let's just call this zero down here. Let's just think of this as our x-axis, okay? So this piece shape number one is 10 inches tall, whereas Y bar is right in the middle of that. So Y bar is at five inches. And the area of that is a half inch wide by 10 inches long. So that's five inches squared, right? <clears throat> okay. And then shape number two, where's shape number two? He's way over there. Where is Y bar? Well, this is three. So the whole thing is three and a half, isn't it? This is 3.5, okay? And how far is it from the bottom to the top of the part? Well, that's 10 plus a half, so that's 10.5, right? So where is Y bar for this guy right here? Well, you gotta go 10.5 and then come back half of 3.5, right? So here we go, I'm gonna use my calculator so I don't make a mistake on 3.5 divided by 2 equals 1.75. So 10.5 minus 1.75 is 8.75. Is that what y'all got? And this one's also 8.75. Now the area for those is um, 3.5 divided by 2, right? Or 3.5 times a half wide. So that's 1.75. And finally, shape number four, where's the centroid of this guy from the bottom? It's 10 plus a half of a half, right? So 10 plus 0.25, which is 10.25. And the area of that guy is three times 0.5, I knew that one, one and a half. Okay, so we need to fill in Y times A, so that's 25, what's this one? 8.75 times 1.75 equals 15.31. And this one is same. And this one, 10.25 times 1.5 equals 15.375. Okay, I think we're almost there. So we need the sum of the A's. Well, that's going to be right there, isn't it? The sum of the A's is 5 plus 1.75 plus 1.75 plus 1.5 equals 10. And then we need the sum of the YA's. That's 25 plus 15.3125 times 2 plus... 15.375 is 71, okay? So what is Y bar? It's 71 divided by 10, which is 7.1, and these are in inches, aren't they? 
So Y bar is 7.1 inches. That neutral axis is 7.1 inches from the bottom of the part, which means that from the top of the part, right, the whole thing was 10.5, so 10.5 minus, whoa, no, clear, 10.5 minus 7.1, is 3.4 so this right here is 3.4 okay and then over here 7.1 that's step one right we don't even know anything about that but we know where the neutral axis is we had to find the neutral axis matter of fact for tensile stress right the part that's in tension which is the bottom what is C going to be what is the distance 7.1 from the neutral axis to the bottom is 7.1 for compressive stress which is the top what's c going to be from the neutral axis to the top that c is going to be 3.4 so we did kind of find something for our equation there now the moment is already given and we're going to have to be careful because that's in foot kips and all our stuff is in inches so that's another trick there um, i think the last thing we need to do let's calculate i if we calculate i i think we're going to be there okay so I equals 1 12th BH cubed plus AD squared. So since we have this in four parts, let's just do this in four parts, okay? We'll find I in four parts, okay? So let's do piece number one, okay? Piece number one, oh my, is 1 12th. The base, what's the base? 0.5. What's the height? 10. Plus the area of piece number one. This is nice, we already have that. Plus five times, here's where most people mess up, is what is D? Remember the D is the distance from the neutral axis of the whole thing to the centroid of the part that I'm working with. So I'm working with this piece here. So this piece here is in the middle of this 10, right? So I go to the outside of the part, 7.1, and I come back 5. So that means that the D here is 2.1. Okay, that's piece number 1. Okay, so let's do piece number 2. So plus 1 12th. What's the base on piece number 2, this little guy? The base, half. The height, 3.5. Plus the area area is 1.75 and then what is D remember D is if I go from the neutral axis to the outside of the part that's 3.4 and then I come back half of that 3.5 so 3.5 divided by 2 equals no 3.5 divided by 2 is 1.75 and so 3.4 minus 1.75 equals 1.65. Okay, now that's piece number two. There's piece number one, there's piece number two. Is piece number three the same as two? Yep, so let's just do this. Let's two them that. Let's put a two on there times two. And then we have one more plus, last piece, is piece number four up there at the top. So we got one twelfth. The base is what, three? The height this time is 0.5 BH cubed. BH cubed, BH, oh, I forgot my cubed over there, didn't I? Cubed, that would be bad. Plus the area, which is 1.5 times D. Well, D is 3.4 minus 0.25, right? So 3.4 minus 0.25 equals 3.15. Okay, that's squared. So now we got to do is put all this in our calculator, okay? And this is going to give us, what is this going to give us? This is going to give us inches to the fourth, okay? So I'm going to put these in my calculator piece one, two, one, two, three, right? So here we go. Let's see if I can do this. 0.5 times 10 cubed equals divided by 12 equals 41.67 plus 5 times 2.1 squared equals, okay, so the first part is 
63.72, that's what that is. Now I'm gonna do this piece here, this chunk here, okay? And that's 0.5 times 3.5 cubed equals, divided by 12 equals plus 1.75 times 1.65 squared equals 6.55, and then I'm going to multiply all that times 2. So that's 13.10. Now I'm on this last piece down here. 3 times 0.5 cubed equals, divided by 12, equals plus 1.5 times 3.15 squared equals 14.92. I'm going to add all those together, so plus 13.1 plus 63.72 equals 91.74, 91.74 inches to the fourth, and that is what I, about bending around the x-axis is equal to, okay? So that is a lot of work for the moment of inertia, okay? This is, should be a statics review. If you don't understand how to do this, go back to statics, the very last three or four videos in my statics series, and review that stuff, okay? So here we go. Sigma uh, for tension is equal to, for tension, tension's where? The top or the bottom? The bottom, right? It equals four, I'm gonna do this equation here, MC over I, so four, and that's foot kips. Remember, a kip is a thousand pounds, but we don't want that in feet, do we? So one foot is 12 inches, right? And that way our feet will get canceled out. And what is that going to give us? Um, times what? M times C. And what's the distance? C is to the bottom of the part for tension. So C is going to be 7.1 inches divided by. The moment of inertia, which is 91.74. And that's inches to the fourth, right? But two of those are going to be canceled away. There goes one of them, and there goes the other one. So it's going to leave us with kips per square inch, or KSI, right? So 4 times 12 times 7.1 equals divided by... 91.74 equals 3.71. So sigma in tension equals 3.71 KSI. Okay, can we do the same thing for compression? That's the top of the part, right, where our wrinkles were. So sigma compression, what's going to be different? It's going to be 4 times 12 times, what about C? Is C different? Yeah, for the top of the part, it's 3.4 divided by, same I, 91.74. So in compression, I have 48 times 3.4 equals divided by 91.74, 1.78. So sigma for compression equals 1.78 KSI. Does it surprise me that compression is less than tension? It shouldn't because the only thing that changed was the distance. And this is farther away from the neutral axis than that is, right? So it's going to be bigger on the bottom. That's all there is to it, okay? So we're going to get a new equation for our equation sheet. I'm going to add that one over here. And let's see if it gets harder. Okay, hang on.